I hope you enjoyed that intro. I'm trying something a little different. I'm not going to lie, I never really enjoyed Corsair's mice design. They always seemed a bit too small or odd shape for my liking, but that is until the Corsair Night Sword hit the market, which piqued my interest and ticked enough boxes for me to want to get it and check it out. Now this mouse definitely isn't cheap at 139 Aussie dollars or about 70 US, which really pushes it into the enthusiast grade category, which the average gamer generally doesn't want to spend that much on a mouse unless it is really worth it. I have currently been using the SteelSeries Rival 310, which has been as close to perfection as I could personally want from a gaming mouse from all that I have tested so far, but unfortunately, it is plagued by the well-known issue of the side grips being poorly glued on, which affected the first batch of these and annoyed me enough to end up trying something new instead. Can this night sword be a viable replacement? Let's start off with the tour, do some testing, and end it with a conclusion, shall we? On the left hand side is one of my favourite features on a mouse, a thumb support. This is coated in a thin layer of textured rubber, but unfortunately, I still do find my thumb slipping from time to time, which is a little unfortunate. Just in front of that is a sniper button, which I found was positioned a little bit too far forward for me to press easily, especially since the side grip is angled out, which points my thumb away from the button, so I have to do an awkward thumb bend to press the button down properly, which weakens my grip on the mouse and, of course, affects my aim. This could easily be solved by having the button protrude out a little taller or shaving the thumb grip down to be flush with the rest of the body, but this is just for my hand and grip style, so your experience may vary. The two side buttons are nice and clicky, both position well to reach, large enough so they are easy to find, and you can feel the split in the middle to distinguish between the two. On the right hand side is more of that rubber texturing, which I also found a bit too smooth for me to maintain a consistent, strong grip. Out the front is a 1.8 metre braided cable terminating into a quite large Corsair branded USB 2.0 connector, so you definitely know which one is the mouse when it is plugged into the back of your computer. The left and right mouse buttons are separated by the scroll wheel in the middle, concaved so that your fingers rest nicely on top, and of course are satisfyingly clicky, featuring Omron switches rated for 50 million clicks. Speaking of the scroll wheel, it is well positioned, made of plastic but with a nice rubber coating, has well defined scroll steps and a decent actuation I would rate on the, no pun intended, slightly stiffer side of things. Just behind that is the two buttons that annoyed me the most at first, as by default they are set to change your Corsair IQ profile, not your DPI, which at first confused me as I had recently been messing around with switching my DPI, but it makes complete sense to me now. The reason it makes sense is the two buttons to the left of the left click are the DPI switch buttons and are conveniently placed, or so I thought, in perfect reach to give them a quick tap with your index finger, which is so much easier and faster than doing the weird worm finger action to reach behind the scroll wheel that I find I have to adjust my hand to do properly. Unfortunately, I've since found that during intense gunfights, when I'm whipping the mouse about, I have a tendency to hit the DPI button on the side of my keyboard, which completely messes with my aim, and this seems to happen a lot. The palm area is also coated in a thin layer of textured rubber, which I find a bit more comfortable for my palm than just plain old plastic. There is also the Corsair logo present here that is RGB and one of four customizable lighting zones. The other three are the front three cutouts, the scroll wheel, and at the back under the palm area. We will talk more about lighting shortly. On the bottom is five various sized Teflon feet, which do an excellent job of helping the mouse to do some of the most seamless gliding I've ever experienced, so top marks for their implementation. In the middle is a PMW3391 sensor, which is basically one of the best sensors currently on the market, with up to just a stupidly over the top 1800 DPI that can be adjusted in increments of 1 to really hone in your perfect settings. Surrounding the sensor is a hexagonal plastic cover, which is a little difficult to pry off, but once removed reveals 6 cylindrical cutouts where you can add in the included additional weights, which come in this awesome little plastic Corsair case that I have no doubt most people will eventually lose. The three solid weights are 4.5 grams each, and the three hollow ones are 2.8 grams, which leaves a huge amount of customization in your hands to really tailor this mouse to your needs. 
The entire mouse body is made of plastic, but it is incredibly sturdy with absolutely zero flex throughout, which means it will definitely survive a rage induced death slam or two. Not that I would recommend putting that to the test. Build quality is of course fantastic, with no flex or rattle, but the body shape does mean it can only be used by right handed gamers unfortunately. Sorry lefties. Size wise, the mouse is 128mm long, 82mm wide, including the thumb grip, and 38mm high, making it quite a large mouse, meaning it's not really suited for some with average to small sized hands unfortunately. Weight wise, the base mouse is 119 grams and increases to a whopping 141.9 grams fully loaded with the included weights, which really puts this mouse into the heavy category, which is quite interesting considering the current mouse trend seems to be the complete opposite. As promised, let's talk about lighting, which is fairly consistent everywhere except the scroll wheel, which is much darker than the other areas, which is actually more consistent with the colour the software displays. There are three little lights on the left hand side in front of the side buttons to display which of the three DPI levels you currently have selected, and you can customise these to be a different static colour for each level, and even have the sniper DPI display a different colour as well, which can be a handy little indicator. For effects we have the classic static colour, solid which seems to be a way to customise a flashing effect and its intensity, gradient which slowly transitions along the colour gradient to the next selected colour, the classic rainbow cycle, Color Pulse, which you can set to random colors or alternating between two. Color Shift, which can be set to random or alternative. Then there are the effects that you can sync with other Corsair devices as well, such as Spiral Rainbow, Rainbow Wave, Color Wave, Visor, Rain, Type Lighting, Temperature, which can be set to CPU, GPU or motherboard sensors with custom temperature colour settings. And of course, colour shift, colour pulse and static colour can also be linked. Okay, that's the boring specs and junk out of the way. Let's get on to the testing portion of the video. First up is a bit of fast paced aim training against some bots in CSGO. Before moving on to the toxic environment that is multiplayer in modern warfare, but we aren't here to talk about brain cells lost while testing this mouse out. So how was it? The sensor is fantastic, never letting me down and staying on target when I could actually aim. But there is something a little off about the mouse body for me, and I found it just didn't feel completely natural in my hand, and got uncomfortable after an hour or more. But it could be the fact that I kept adjusting my grip as my fingers consistently slid out of position. Software is up next, and let's just say Corsair IQ is the most over-engineered, unnecessarily complex software the average gamer just doesn't need, when you only really want to just dial in a few DPI settings and a colour profile or two. The first option is Profiles, which you can obviously switch between profiles, link a profile to a specific program, customise the profile icon, change the background image and blur it, or change the transparency of the tabs. Are you starting to see my point yet? Next up is Actions, where you can create overly convoluted macros or remap all mouse buttons except the left click. Lighting Effects is the next tab, and by default all these tabs are empty, so in order to do anything such as customise the lighting, you need to first hit the plus symbol to add an effect layer. That's right, by default there is no lighting when you first plug this mouse in. Why complicate this stuff more than it needs to be Corsair? You can also view different angles of the mouse to get an idea of which area the adjustment might affect. Hardware Actions is the next tab, which seems to be the Actions tab with less available options, but maybe someone might be able to correct me down in the comments if I'm missing something. Hardware Lighting seems to be the same story again, just the Lighting tab but with less functionality, and even when I assign a lighting profile in here, it doesn't seem to affect the mouse. Again Corsair, why is it so complicated? On to DPI, where you can set your three normal DPI levels, and also your sniper sensitivity. Set one of those levels as default, you can change the static colour, which represents each DPI level, as well as split the X and Y DPI axis for each. Next up is Performance, where you can turn off Angle Snapping and Advanced Pointer Precision, change pointer speed as well as change the profile indicator colour. Surface calibration is a good one to test to make sure your mouse pad is consistent without any bumps or indentations and also calibrate the sensor for the surface you plan on using. Weight tuning lets you know what weights you have installed and their locations in real time which is pretty neat if you're going to be messing around balancing the mouse for your needs. Finally is onboard profiles which is where you can save up to three profiles in case your mouse is on multiple devices. No idea why they are named like that by the way, you don't seem to be able to change it. It's conclusion time. The Night Sword is a fantastic contender in the heavy and large category with a great sensor, 
good build quality, and some nice lighting, but I just don't feel it is for me. The whole time I used it, it just felt that slight bit off, and maybe want to go back to my rival 310 if the size didn't fall off. So for now, I will switch to the Night Sword, and hopefully, with some more time, I might be able to adjust to it entirely, but there is another contender on the block. It is unfortunate about the side grips on the Night Sword, especially if you have wet or sweaty hands, as my fingers slowly slid away from where it was most comfortable, meaning I had to constantly let go of the mouse to readjust my grip. I appreciate this product, as I feel the large and heavy mouse category doesn't get shown much love these days, as everyone seems to be favouring the smaller, lightweight options, so it's nice to see Corsair looking after us. But unfortunately, due to this, and the price point, it's going to be quite a niche product, unfortunately. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing for more reviews and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question, or criticism, leave a comment, and thank you very much for watching.